What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight, Thursday's night slate. We also will have, by the time you've seen this, have gone live probably for the for the early slate. We will also be live for for talking. We'll also talk about uh, football on the live. So we've got a few things to go through today, Sheets. How are you doing? I, I had a very mediocre, like break even ish night, which felt like it was going to be a great night because I was all over the Yankees, except for I just didn't have enough of Oswaldo Cabrera and. Uh, and even still, it just uh, it just felt like it should have been a little bit better than it was because I was very high on the Yankees. They were my number one stack. They abused them in my big buy-ins. And it was nice to finish near the top, but it's a lot more fun when you're at the top. So how'd you do? And then let's get into the slate. I had a whole bunch of lineups with Matt Manning and Jordan Lyles. So pretty close to getting it right. Right. <laughs> um, and well, I, You know, it was the McKenzie, though, was the one who went really nuts. Yeah. He had the biggest and I, game. And I had the Yankees with Noam Cabrera. Um, or did Snell. And so that's uh, the way it goes. But you were, you were mentioning to me before we got on, there was something you wanted to address about being concentrated and stuff like that with certain stacks and stuff like that. Yeah. So like if, if let's just say I was playing like, like yesterday, I played one five fifty five, three two fifties, one one twenty one, that single entry. And then, a, and then three in like the 88, which are all hand builds for me now. So t- two out of those ended up being Yankee stacks and one with a Yankee complimentary stack, but then the other three were the other, the rest of them were spread out. If you're going to be just, if you want, if you really like like five teams, you should be playing like 20 different hand builds at least if you're going to stack five different teams. Now, combo stacks and things like that get confusing because like if you're doing four fours or th- or just three men sometimes, it's fine. But you want to just recycle and go through because that was my biggest frustration with what I didn't do last night. And of course, it's it's variance. It, you know, could have just as easily gone my way, but uh, is not getting as Waldo Cabrera into some of my Yankee builds, a guy who I've been playing like crazy, their cheapest, uh, viable bat, I guess you would say. Um, and I, and I just didn't get, didn't get there because I'd have to use all my outfield spots because I wanted to play Stanton and judge. And, and I would have, I would have found if, if I, if I was recycling enough times, I would have found the, no Stanton in this one, but, but we'll, we'll throw Cabrera in that one instead, or, or I'll play all three of those outfielders together. It just, it, it just was a little bit of, I, I don't, I feel like I've spread out a little too much at times. And I just think like when you're, you know, when you're, when you're, let's say you're hand building five lineups, you want to heavily focus on two teams that you're stacking and then maybe use pieces from like, you know, a few other teams or whatever as secondary stacks, or maybe you want to use those two teams as secondary stacks and some of the other builds, but they should be featured throughout your lineups because especially on like nine game slates, you just aren't going to find the right combinations. Even if you get the right teams, if you're just going to build one stack like this and one stack like this of different teams, just really, really impossible to win that way. This is nothing new, but it's some, it's a mistake that I see people consistently, you know, make like lose at DFS because of, and it's probably what cost me from when, from actually having a big night when I, when I was pretty married to the Yankees, the problem was I did like some other stacks, but I could have at least, I, I could have played Yankees three bands as, as, as and, and, and Cabrera should have been a part of it. It just was just one of those things that the more you play, the more you focus in on and, and, and make the slate smaller, as we say, really, really try to like get exposure to some of those other things, but more when you have 30 entries, 40 entries, 50 entries, when you're playing like just, you know, four big builds, they, they should feature that the stack that you like the most in at least probably in two or three of them at the, at the least, if not all four, that's, that's just what I wanted to say. All right. You want to start yeah. heading into today's slate? Yeah. Let's yeah. jump into the slate. Um, it's kind of a, you know, these are not as, not as fun as they used to be um, because the, the tournaments are smaller. There's all kinds of weirdness and everything. And uh, just, I don't know. It doesn't feel. I, I don't mind. I don't mind the tournaments being smaller. Um, and I also, the, the thing that's not I want to say frustrating it's just I, but i think it's it, it's it's manageable the, the the way that uh pitchers are being i don't want to say shut down but they're being uh managed um it's just you know it's just, i think it's just another variable to to throw into the mix i will say something um i was gonna wait until uh we get to verlander to talk about this but but here here's something i want to throw at you and, and this has probably been talked about i don't know it's always something i talk about with respect to these pitchers that have the the 70 pitch limit or the 65 pitch limit that go five innings and you know and and, and pitch like perfect games just and stuff like that you know whatever just keep keep something in mind is that and is that when you are know that you're only having to pitch five innings and yeah. you know you're on some kind of limit it's easier to have like kind of a, a perfect five innings you know what I mean like like if, if, if you if you're out there and you have to and you're 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 said you know you're gonna pitch till your arm falls off like normal it's just harder to pitch like with complete efficiency for like all seven or eight innings but if you give a guy like Scherzer or Verlander or whatever say listen we're gonna give you five innings or whatever 
I'm not particularly surprised they come out with those with those five inning incredible performances because right. they can they, you know they 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 know that they're not going to be pitching any more than that and they can put all their effort into those five innings. So yeah, um, it, it's really interesting what you're saying, and I think that it's it, it's we we talk about pitch count because that's a much you'd think that would be a much more like real barometer and what players, what, what, what people would use with pitch count. What we're starting to see more and more of in the major leagues is you're going to pitch this number of innings. You know what I mean? That was right. the only answer to that would have been because, because I, th- I think he could have thrown 80 pitches and, and still pitched five innings. I really think that's what would have happened. I think that's what they were going to do. And I think if it was one, nothing that they probably leave him in for one more inning. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of five. I, I think that there's, there's different variables and it's always hard to predict a baseball game script, but that it is interesting to, 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 to think about it. It's, it's something, you know, people are shutting people down. There's also more opportunities for young kids. There's also guys who aren't getting pinch hit for as much because the, the, they're going to let lefties who are, who just came up as a September call up play, uh, you know, get, get more hacks against lefties and stuff like that. If they're, you know, when they swip the swift to pitching change, so it's just something that we should always consider. And, and, and we should, you know, factor it in as we go forward. So, so the, so the, the major leagues in Yankee stadium faded the, uh, I mean, faded the the Pirates as far as the team that was going to be uh, playing when uh, Aaron Judge hits a sixty second because they they would not have been happy about that. I mean, they they much prefer the Red Sox be in town. And who would have thought that the Yankees put up fourteen runs or however many they put up with without Judge hitting the <laughs> getting there? I mean, yeah, in all fairness, he was he had he smoked two doubles and, and right. Well, I just mean without getting the home run. So now the Red Sox have to come in. They get Max. They get Max. Uh, Max sellout. Max. Uh, you know, yeah. Max publicity. Max hype. You know. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, part of me wants to wants wants to say screw screw the Yankees uh, PR machine. Let them go. Let them let them go get it in Toronto or something like that. But yeah. uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll see. It's um, cool though with everybody standing up, staying standing room only every time he's yeah, bats. Yeah, absolutely. Every absolutely. station switching over to it. It's a, you know it's kind of fun. Um. All right. Well, let's get in. Let's get into this. It's, it's, so it's a six thirty slate, guys. Just to remind yep. everybody today. And we'll um, go live at five thirty. Yep, that sounds good to me. Um. This first game, I'm trying to understand. Now, I don't, I don't want to like play these teams. I'm a little like it's. I, I think that Keller is completely reasonable at 5800. I mean, it's weird to say you know we don't usually play Mitch Keller, but why is the run total so low in a game that seems like it should have been? I, I would imagine this this could have easily been a, a run higher. It is only 61 degrees, but you got 15 mile an hour winds blowing out. And I don't know much, much about Wadniski. I can't pronounce his name, but apparently he's got a big old strikeout rate. Right? Yeah, I, 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 that's all I was going to say. Is I, I just did a quick glance at it, at some of the minor league, you know, numbers and stuff, and I just it just feels like the run total feels low to me. That was my first take on this, and so so yeah, I think Keller is the most logical pitching option. Maybe, maybe you could include him into maybe include with whatever, however we pronounce his name, Wadniski or whatever it is. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to stand on, on trying to make that kind of a call, but if we think he's got a, a you know, a reasonable, a good strikeout rate or whatever, and, and he's, and he's pitched, you know, three times now and, and looked really good twice. Um, uh, I, I mean, he should, should certainly be in play. So I feel like both pitchers are in play. And I also have a part of me that wants to stack Pittsburgh. So that's, that's where I'm at on this one. I kind of feel as though, um, what you would call it that uh she's uh Shiznowski or whatever uh, i think i think he's going to be a very very really good pivot off of what could be a pretty chalky hunter green by the end of the day um uh we'll see about that but but if that's the way things go i i think that the 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 the, the Wisnowski is is completely in play and he's also i think going to be a t- decent pivot off of Mitch Keller who could end up getting mm-hmm. getting some ownership as well um if you need to, you know what I mean? Like there, there are variations where you can just double pay for pitching and be done with it, you know? But, but if you do go the SB2 route to get to, you know, the Yankees and, and, you know, other, other Houston's and other, you know, higher priced teams, then I think that it's going to be a battle between guys like Keller and Hunter Green and maybe even we'll talk about Barrios when we get to him too. But I think both these pitchers are, are kind of in play for whatever reason. Um, I feel as though the Wesneski plays better uh, than the Keller play um, mm-hmm. just because of the strikeout upside. And the two weather things kind of like, you know, are, are heads off, heads head to head with each other. You say there's wind blowing out, but yet it's only 60 degrees. Mm-hmm. I, I guess that cancels in some way. Yeah, you know? a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, we, you know, maybe we'll get some umpire data that could help. It, what's interesting to me is that in addition to everything I just said, I mean, both these teams show up as pretty good values on the hitting side, you know? Right. Um, well, because they're, 
they're they're terrible and they're cheap you know <laughs> right um so uh I mean, right off the bat and kind of a short slate i think this one game and the next one are are, are pretty important games to try to get right and uh uh, right now, again, I, I want to hear your, your opinion on, on Hunter Green and, and Barrios. I, we'll get to those really, really quickly. Um, but I'm looking at both these pitchers, and I, for whatever reason, the Keller play just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Um, and it, for no other reason than I just maybe I'm just biased and never had any luck actually playing him. I know he's probably got he's gotten better finally, right? Um, and this is certainly a matchup to 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 show that that's the case. Um, but uh, I don't know for some reason that that play just kind of annoys me. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm with you a little bit. Like I, and, and it's weird, you know, we're, here we have Keller and, and he's going to be 20% on and you've got no, I mean, I think was some people, some people will play Wesniski by the end of the day, but you have Wesniski going to be projected to be 2% versus 25% or whatever it is right now. And the truth is Wesniski is pitched in three times and two of those games have been higher than Mitch Keller has ever put up in a game, you know, and it's Pittsburgh. You can you can get away with 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 the uh, with with you know not not your greatest stuff even against Pittsburgh. So, but at the same time, <laughs> Brandon Reyes, uh, twenty five hundred, sure. um, Quaros, who's probably going to play second base, is the minimum cost guy you could use, or twenty one hundred for for Chicago. Uh, Cast uh, Reynolds, Cruz, and Castro. I like the top of the order here for the other guys. I think you could include uh, Cal Mitchell if he's back in there or Chavis at, at 2,100. They're just really, really cheap. So maybe complimentary stacks more than main stacks, but I do think this is a really important game to try to get right. So uh, Milwaukee, Cincinnati is, uh, you know, you have two very, very key pitchers. I think to this slate, you have um, Woodruff and Hunter green. Woodruff is one of the top spend ups, um, arguably the best spend up and, and arguably, well, probably going to be the highest owned of the spend ups. He's got a really, really good matchup in kind of a shitty park. Um, but uh, that that's that's the deal with that. And then you have Hunter Green, who is just who is probably, you know, a thousand too cheap um in, in this matchup for openers. Um, and he's got that GPP profile, which we like and we hate, right? So mm-hmm. so 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 he's he throws the ball a hundred thousand miles an hour and he has incredible strikeout stuff. Um, and he's, and I think he's a really, really great play. You know, uh, I don't, my ownership now is, is just a joke. Uh, we, this has to update. I have like 9% ownership. That's just not going to be the case. Um, I imagine people are going to play him. So, uh, there's that. Um, and the other thing is that again, the park does kind of stink. And you know, when you, you know what happens when you throw at a hundred, the ball can get out of the park pretty quickly. And, and so you get guys like, I presume, I mean, unless, unless he got, you know, he's not on the team anymore. I presume how he tell us is going to be a good play um, at 4,200 in this game. If you don't play, uh, you don't play him uh hundred green. And I'm presuming that, you know, uh, even that Christian Yelich at 4,400 is going to be a good play if you don't play Hunter green. So uh, I don't think I have it in me to play like Reds guys <laughs> to leverage against Woodruff. So mm-hmm. for me, Woodruff's probably the best play on the slate. Hunter green. I probably, honestly, I probably have second. I, I would, I would, if, if ownership weren't a thing and I had to make salary work, I'd probably play those two. I'd probably play Woodruff and Green, and those would be my top two. But I have to see where this ownership thing kind of comes in. Um, but that's kind of where I'm looking at this. Yeah, early early ownership on Green doesn't doesn't look to be overwhelmingly high. Um, I, I agreed with basically everything you said. I mean, the truth is, this could have been a full slate, and Woodruff is just far too cheap. Uh, yeah against the Cincy team. Now it is in Cincy for what that's worth. And that's, you know, again, people, people don't, it, it's, it's not like the air is different. So it's not like the, the cores affect exactly, but in terms of actual home run production and, and, and difference teams, you know, getting a boost on the, like you do get a massive boost playing in Cincinnati because of how little the stadium is. I don't think that's going to be overall what costs the Woodruff anyway, because I think the strikeouts will even out anything. Same thing with Hunter green, if he gets, if he gets it going, but I, I think, I think Milwaukee is certainly viable. Um, if you're going to take the anti Hunter green approach, I I'm a big Hunter green guy. I mean, yeah, has been hyped forever, but if you're going to go the other dire- direction. I think that you can absolutely feel really good about playing a, an underpriced Milwaukee stack. And that's probably a, probably my natural thing is to play Woodruff with one of the other guys. We end up deciding of these spend downs, including Hunter green as a possibility, but where I'm not playing Hunter green, I'm certainly going to have exposure to, uh, to Milwaukee. Um. This is an interesting one because you don't usually see a below four run total for uh this is that maybe I'm t- yeah the same game um for Toronto uh against in a, in a against a bullpen game now it's a good bullpen with a long relief of, of Yarbrough and everything like that 
Um, and and then you have the weird Berrios at 6,600 question mark. Um, I am completely open to Berrios. I have been a little, the strikeouts are just so far down that it feels weird because I've been playing him even on big slates when he's been like this cheap. Yep. But we didn't have other guys with, with that, that could go out there and get us twenty five or thirty, like 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 maybe a Wisniewski or a or a Green in the same price tier. And I think that I think Barrios is 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 definitely reasonable on my list right now. But it worries me a little bit, and I feel like I'm supposed to have more interest in Toronto than I actually do. Um, I, I think that just playing, you know, for me, it's the fact that they're not going to be owned. Uh, probably means I'll 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 play like a Vlad one off, or I'll play like a maybe a three man with Chapman, Springer, and and Vlad to go with my exp- my cheapo stacks because there's lots of cheap options out there. But I I don't think that I want to fully stack Toronto today personally. I do I do I do specifically really like Vlad Springer and Bichette against the lefty for the, the and and Chapman for the majority of the game. So Chapman and, and and Vlad would be my two best home run bets from this game, and I think that they have a really good chance at it. So. That's what I'm going to be doing. I, I asked you this before, and, and I, I still don't know the answer. I should, I can look up in 10 seconds, but I just, how, how many wild card teams come from like the American League? So, there are three division winners. Do you know how many wild card teams they get? Yeah, we, t- we talked about it before. Um, so there's, there's six total, there, there's six total teams from each division that come, that, 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 that advance. There's the division winners, and then there's the wild card teams. So there's three wild card teams. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it looks like it looks like the, the 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 Rays are kind of in good shape. So it's Rays, Blue Jays, and Mariners, all pretty much tied for that that third wild card spot. And there's a big five game drop to the next team. So so these these guys look like they're doing it. Here's here's my philosophy. And again, my philosophy is that when it comes to like this time of year, I don't I don't screw with the Rays. Like I I don't try to put hitters against them. Uh, I I don't try to put pitchers against them. I don't try to do anything with them. I, and, and like the Rays against the Blue Jays, this is, you know, this this could be for something. I think the Rays, this is going to be one of those trick trick pitching lineups where they'll just just somehow just just won't allow Toronto to get a run. I have no idea how, but they just do it somehow. And when it gets down time to playoff time, this is when you get all of a sudden, the last like, couple of weeks, all of a sudden Drew Rasmussen's like the best pitcher in baseball. You know what I mean? Like, not really, but I mean, that's... No, that's it's a, true. It's, it's almost like an, an, an NBA team that gets ready for the postseason and then yeah. they're their best ball right then. They always do it. Yeah, so I'm I'm not I'm probably going to be like off of most Tampa <laughs> baseball games from from a uh, from a fantasy perspective, like pretty much the rest of the season, I think. Um, anyway, uh, so that's kind of where I'm at in this game. I'm really not going to do anything. Yeah, I, I'll just throw out a because it's kind of a smaller slate playing that way. I'll just throw out my favorite play. Uh, I I do on the other side. I do like for Tampa Bay. I think Wander Franco is way too cheap at 4400. So okay. Uh, that's that would be that would be the one thing I, I think and I and I think that I have no problem taking bats against Berrios um, unless I'm you know, you know not when I'm pitching him probably although I'm not against it um, but I think that you can completely take bats against him and feel okay about so, it. So so what are you what are you doing with them? I said what are you doing with Verlander? Why don't you just say I mean what, what what's your opinion on Verlander as a player? Um, it seems like the wrong thing <laughs> to do. I just can't find an argument of why this makes sense unless we really think he's going to throw all of, and it wouldn't surprise me if he does go out there and throw all of his pitches. Um, I think they want to get him the win. I think he wants to get through another game and just pad that, that already Cy Young that he's getting, but have one of the greatest seasons in, in recent history of baseball. Like really, that's how good it's been. Um, we've got a couple guys this year that sort of quietly, like remember when we were like, she's like 10 years ago when everybody was having these kind of seasons, they would be like, and must see TV, everybody's news and all this stuff. Even when Bonds did his thing and then before that, McGuire, man, was like 18 years ago or whatever. But Verlander is having legitimately like one of the all-time great seasons. Um, having said anything about him, I, I I don't think I'm playing him tonight. I don't see, I mean, you can afford to. Uh, it, 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 I don't even know that he necessarily has more upside than these other guys do. I, I don't know. Personally, he's so good that anything, he can always put up a number like he did last time out. But Woodruff is clearly my number one ahead of them. And all of these cheap guys, I just feel like, I feel like one of them is going to outscore him. And I'd rather try and try and find that guy. That's, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Um, his whip is 0.83. Yeah. Um, that's probably top 10 ever. Um, I, I, without even looking. Um, there, yeah. Yeah. And this is, this is a really, really good season. And, 
this is a really good season for him. And, and uh, anyway, that's not particularly relevant for tonight. Uh, cer- she certainly has the ability to, to put up 30 fantasy points. I mean, I, it just does, um, especially if he gets stretched out a little bit more. I don't understand why they want him to pitch 110 pitches, to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. But to get him in shape, maybe they could let him go 90, something like that. Yeah, it's possible. Um, but it's not as if he's against Oakland. I mean, Baltimore's good. Baltimore's That's good. And, and, and you know, I think it's since the All-Star break, the third lowest strikeout rate against righties of any team in baseball. So, and that's and that's one thing for Verlander. Like we talked about at the beginning of the year, everybody bitching about how Verlander sucks now. And I'm like, okay, because he doesn't go out there and try and strike out 19 guys in a game. And his goal is to try and pitch efficiently through seven innings every time he pitches. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe the, the, the slightly lowered strikeout upside is is you 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 use as a reason not to play him tonight. I, 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 have, him I, I have a question. I, you know, it's the United States of America. I can play whoever I want or whatever. But will they put me in the in, in, in a sanitarium for for recommending or suggesting Kyle Bradish or or is that just or or, or I should just? I'm up. a big Bradish guy. I just don't think that I think it's like it's like we'll wait we will wait till next year is the way I would treat it. Also, okay. I think they're going to be careful with their arms. They have been so far. Oh, uh, okay. Um, okay. And even though they're playing for something like kind of they 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 just haven't brought people back in the same way, and we haven't really seen a, a, a huge leash on him anyway. He's had them to mid nineties games, yeah. but, but okay. if everything's going well, he'll get he'll get in the nineties. But if it's not, it'll be sixty nine or something like that. And I just I just don't see the reason to find extra pitchers when I already like another guy, other guys in this range. And he would he, against Houston, it just feels like the wrong thing. I actually think that Houston stack is the under owned stack that you it's expensive, which makes it but which is really easy to get to today. Yeah, um, and I and I think Houston's a really legitimate uh, under own stack. It it is frustrating these days that you know, again though the one thing I want to point out about this game, you have twenty mile an hour winds coming in from left field. It's a little bit cross field ish, but it's coming in a little from left, so it's kind of hard to to want to play any of the righties. But I would uh, I would feel good about the Houston lefties. So that would be my take on the 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 thing in this game is maybe Alvarez and Tucker, just those two, because um, twenty mile an hour winds that's no joke. You know what I mean? I had um. I had seven teams to, uh, in total as the teams I'm interested in stacking at all. Um, one of them I, I dismissed. Uh, we talked about why I don't want to play Toronto. The other one was uh, Milwaukee, and that's you know more of a you know obviously a GP play anti Hunter Green play. And I do have Houston um, as another one. Um, so I, I will say this: we got to do a little more research in it. I was listening to kind of another show, and the, and and for what they were saying, apparently, I mean it's a sample size thing, but. Apparently, Bradish has been really good against lefties this year, um, even from the right side. So I, I, I got to look into that a little bit more. But um, yeah, it doesn't uh, worry with me with these because the only lefties you're going to be looking at are two awesome all-star level lefties. So I'm not worried. Right. I, I don't care about what his numbers are too much against lefties. Okay. If it was going to be a five-man stack or a four-man stack with four lefties or something like that, I, I it might be different. But I, I just think I that's where I'm standing anyway on it. That's how, I, I thought about that too, and and it's funny because as as he's good at all that, people say he's good at all these things. Well, you know what? Real numbers will show up at some point for him, but right. uh, really, it's a strange world we live in in DFS when Kyle Bradish with a five plus ERA at four and twelve is everybody thinks he's a rock star, and then meanwhile, other guys like Nicholas are you know end up with a an ERA of below three or whatever. I mean, he's not not even this year, but the guy guy like that, but he's not striking anybody out. So, and we don't see the the, the awesome talent, awesome arm talent. So everybody hates those guys, but realistically, they actually score more fantasy points too. By the way, too, you know, it's not like it is good to, to limit other teams scoring a ton of runs on you. I think that's uh, something that's a little underrated in DFS actually at this point, because it used to be so overrated. Anyway, um, it's a really weird slate. This is a very tough slate. And a, and a lot of it is weather based because every team I keep thinking about stacking and I look at the run totals, I'm going, Oh, okay. I see what's happening here. I mean, and we're going to get into it in this, in this next game, right? Like Atlanta, Philly. I mean, I, <laughs> 14 mile an hour winds blowing in from left field, 66 degrees in Philadelphia. I really wanted to stack Atlanta when I first looked at this slate and I am not going to play a bunch of righties hitting into 14. I'm just not going to do it. I just don't, that's just not how I, how I play DFS. I don't want to take away all the power upside. Now the truth is, do you always need the power? No, not, not these days on these smaller slates, but really, really hard to get to all these righties against the lefty when they cost what they cost and you're hitting into 14 mile an hour winds and 66 degree temperatures, like hard to get the ball out of the stadium. So I'm, I'm um, with both lefties on the mound here. This would be another spot where any of these last nights, and and again, guys did end up blowing up, you know, having monster games last night. There were some huge pitching performances, 
But if this was a, a slate like last night or the night before where we had, I, I probably would have, uh, would have, you know, I would, these would have been all my pitching guys would have been the guys who were on this slate. I, I just don't know if I can get to it here. And I, I do think that freed is, is, is probably still a really good play. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to get to the bats with that wind and the, and the temperatures. I actually prefer the pitching here to the, uh, to the hitting. Yep. Um, and I preferred that before I even told me about the wind thing. And it's the type of play that I don't usually like to make either in stock markets or in, or in fantasy sports. Like those, those guys that like, I don't want to play a 10 2. I don't want to play 9 9. I don't want to play 9 5. I don't want to play a 9 2. The 8 7, maybe I'll play them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and just try to pick that spot. And similarly to the stock market, I don't want to buy it at 191, uh, whatever, but at this particular price, it usually is not, I mean, the, the biggest way, the, the, the right way to do things. But for whatever reason, I mean, free to 8,300 just seems just seems like you're just supposed to play it. Um, that's, that's the best thing. We were, we were using them as pivots off of, off of these types of guys at 10, one, like relatively recently. I mean, right. I, whether we were actually doing it, we were at least identifying it. If he was a legitimate pivot exactly. <laughs> at 10, one off these guys. And, and I'm, look, I'm not looking for 30 from him. Um, but you know, back when he was 10, one, like, you know, he might be able to do 25. Now you don't even need that. I mean, now at eight, three, I mean, you can get the 20 that we always seem to pencil in for him, you know? Yep. And, and, and be kind of happy about it. And, and the Suarez, and the only thing that bothers me about the Suarez is that he's got all those righties, right? Um, uh, but like you said, uh, it's it's uh, uh, the wind might might help that. Just think the slate's a little big for me to play him. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's gambling a little bit too much. So I'm probably not going to get to him. I will say this, if I get the Freed, the thing I don't like about Freed, he always, he always gets owned. You know what I mean? Like he's always, he's never like huge chalk, but he's never like, Ooh, I get to play max free to 5%. You know, he's no, always, it's always like 12, 15%. Something yeah, like that. And, and that's probably what he's going to be today. You right, know? So right. I don't think I'm going to do either of these things. However, I will just say that I do, I do prefer the pitching to the hit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and this would have been a game I would have liked to have been. The only thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention of what makes this tough for freed is Philadelphia, even when they don't hit, they have so many guys who they, they work counts deep. They'll make you make your pitch over and over again. And when you don't have a major strikeout pitch, you end up getting your pitch count up really quickly, which Freed pitched well in this game uh, the last time they, they faced each other just the other day. And he did give two home runs, but it's 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 just about how how much he's actually – he throws 105 pitches through six innings where he's pretty clean for the game. I don't know. I just it's, I, 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 that's, that's an argument for maybe fading Freed, but maybe we don't need that argument. As you said, he's not going to be overly popular tonight. So um, – I'm okay with, you know, kind of, I don't know, I guess kind of forgetting uh, I, he's, he's on my list, but he's not the top guy for me right now. Right now, the only guy I know for sure that I'm playing in my big buy-in is, is Woodruff. Um, and I, I'll figure out the rest because I, I, I just don't, I, all the, all these pitchers are underpriced. You can make an argument that the Verlander is underpriced at 10, seven, just for how consistent he is. But um, that's sort of a joke more than anything, but you see what I'm saying. Um, anyway. What are we going to do? So now we get to. <laughs> all right. So, so here's the story. So this is so, where all the pitching went, all the pitching we were looking for. This is where it all went. It all came today. Well, what do you mean? The, the... Just, we, 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 like, I know their guys got there last night, like McKenzie, who I loved and he, but, but right. I know we wanted to play McKenzie at 10 one. And now we have all these pitchers. Well, are... hang on. I got, I got Boston, New York first. Oh, I'm so um, sorry. That's what I, that's what yeah, I, I yeah. didn't. So, so here's the story with Boston, New York. So, so last night I went to sleep and, and, and my wife said, you know, tomorrow you might not want to walk to work it's gonna be pouring tomorrow i'm like oh really so i woke up and it was pouring rain i'm like, oh, man because i really wanted to walk and then I, I went and i i did something else and it started to clear up and i said uh so i said oh stacy i'm gonna walk and she was okay just be careful you know never it, uh, it's supposed to rain later i'm okay whatever so i started walking to work it was really nice out and then and then like five like 500 yards before i got to the office like started to pour again I'm like yeah kid and so, and so I'm looking at the weather and I'm like, oh, I, I don't know what the weather's going to be. And I, I don't see there's any, there's any weather in the forecast in Roth and stuff like that. So I just want to make sure that there's no, there's, no, there's no rain issues that I don't know about because like, uh, that's a, the Stacy weather forecast is always, always something yeah. that's in the back of my As head. of right now, it looks like there's like ne no weather tonight. Yeah, I know that. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So yeah. I just want to double check that. But, but I do, I do think that, um, you know, this is not based on any, any analytics or anything like that, but I, this, I, I think that Judge does hit two home runs tonight and, and just puts Ooh. it into this. Ooh. Yeah, I do. Walker seems like a perfect candidate. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, just come on in there, serve it up, 
you know, be done with it. You know, Red Sox playing for nothing. Uh, I, uh, between it, it's got to, it's got to be sometimes. It's going to be either him or Rich Hill or or or, or Pavetta. Oh, Pavetta's a good candidate. Yeah, he'll be he'll be a good one. So it's going to be gone by the time they leave the they leave the series. That's for sure. Um, yeah. The the one thing I'll throw out there though is, do you think there's a chance that maybe they they like literally just don't intentionally but semi intentionally walk him? Well, this it? is what we that's what we talk about, right? I mean, it's uh, we talked about this yesterday, and that's what you know, listen. Have you ever watched the um the Maris uh, documentary? That's what they were doing. They were just like 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 hitting him and and throwing away from him, and like the Yankees were basically telling the other team to not throw him anything good because they wanted to preserve Root's record and stuff like that. It was like crazy. Um. But I think it's changed. I think everybody wants to just serve it up. I don't know. I, I don't know. That's that's kind of the way I'm. Uh, in it, any case, yeah. I, I I don't think it's going to matter. For I what it works, if you for the for BB, BVP people, if there's one pitcher who owns uh, nobody owns. I mean, it's only 14 at bats, but nine strikeouts, right. no hits. Really? Against, uh, yeah, um, it hasn't touched him. Really, nobody's touched Walker pretty very hard. Wow, and, all right. Can be fairly popular. Um, so I'm trust. I'm just trying to think of it from a DFS perspective. I, I do like my uh, in, a, in a vacuum. I, I I like the Yankees a lot tonight. And yeah, they, they, they've been scoring a million runs every night. So I'm not worried about them. You know, oh, they scored yeah. nine night before they scored no, yeah. nine, two nights in a row. They broke their run line total in the eighth inning alone. Um, so what do you mean? I, oh, okay. Good. Their run line total for the game. They stay out oh, okay, okay. in the eighth inning alone. Um, I, I, I'm I'm OK with both sides of the offenses in this one, but I'm probably just going to pick my favorite bats which is going to be no shocker Devers and judge. Um, and then again, I'm going to cycle these guys in. That's, that's the way I'm playing this. I don't mind if I end up with three mans tonight. It's a very weird slate. Um, especially this time of year when you're going to get like, oh. you have nobody above five run total as things like that. So if you're going to, if you're going to, I think trying to pick out some bats is a really good way to go. You got Bader down at the bottom that can offer some value. If you wanted to go with like more of a stack for the Yankees, for the Red Sox, you've got, um, uh Cassis at 2100 you could use to fill in a uh you know just just as a, as a cheap option Connor Wong should catch it at 26 if you wanted to make the full stacks but as of right now I haven't identified any stacks that I really feel all that great well, about to be honest Milwaukee might be my favorite so far well I, t- I want to go a little different I, I kind of want to um my, my thoughts in this game is that I definitely you know obviously they're like the Yankees like everybody else but um I kind of I kind of want to play tally on here um at 7500 just again, how it's just, can we pl- play? You know what I mean? Well, 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 you could play them again. It's a kind of the, the similar theme of mine that it's the and the theme depends on Hunter Green being 30 percent owned, which he, you know what I mean? Like that. That's the way I went into this. Just what, looking at my projections on my like, these ownership projections are ridiculous. Everybody's going to play Hunter Green. I was looking for, for pivots off and maybe I'm overthinking it. I should just play him. You know what I mean? If he's going to be only 10 percent or something like that. That's why the, the price tag just kind of. This kind of appealed to me because it's literally the exact, exact price as, as Hunter Green, and it certainly is not as good of a play. Certainly doesn't have remotely similar upside as well. Um, but I don't know. I, that just, that's just that's just the way my board looks, you know. That's the, so that's the best I can describe. Like I'd rather play. Would I rather play Mitch Keller? I mean, like, I don't. I, do listen. I, I use this all all the time. This is America. I, I really don't have to play with Mitch Keller. I really don't. Um, right. Uh, but that doesn't mean I have to play J- James Italia. <laughs> okay. right. Um, all right. So I just want to talk through it a little bit. So I, yeah. listen, I do like the Yankees. They're one of my top three stacks um, alongside of Milwaukee and Houston. Um, yeah, I, I will avoid the b- both pitchers in this. Uh, wait, oops. I will avoid. I, I, I just think tie on. Look, if, if in fact they are going to be similarly owned, I think you just always play Hunter Green over time. Oh, yeah. And and so 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 but if it's three to one, then I hear you. The only thing is, are we maybe not better off playing the Wisniewski guy? Um, right, better, right. Maybe playing Freed, who's in the 12% range, if it's yep. you know, 30 for the other guy. So I think that's what I would end up doing rather than playing tie on myself uh, okay. against uh, still a capable Red Sox offense. Yeah, that makes sense. You know. Um, so 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 Cleveland White Sox, this is it's the thing the Yankees got me because you know what? I, I was getting like a whole bunch of Cleveland and I pared them down a little bit, and I almost and I almost got rid of them. But then I saw that the wind was blowing out pretty hard late yesterday, mm-hmm. um, and I said, you know, I'm going to play them. I played them, and in almost any other slate, Cleveland would have been, you yep. know, really, really good. You know, let's put it that way. Yep. Um, but you know, you got the Yankees with the 15 bagger or whatever it is. That's you know, that's that's mm-hmm. you just had to have that. Um, uh, today, um, I wonder what the wind is like today. 
It's, only blowing, it's blowing out 13 miles an hour to right. It's still blowing out. Only 16 um, degrees, 60, 60 degrees, excuse me. Um, so, so you have Bieber, who's obviously great, and 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 the White Sox uh, against righties are, are not particularly great either. The only thing, again, that that's a negative is is that wind blowing out because Bieber can give up home runs, um, and the White Sox can hit home runs. You know, uh, if if things break their way, you know. But aside from that, I mean, I think that I do think it's 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 Bieber, you know, Woodruff. You know, if, if 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 salary wasn't a thing, you know what I mean. Like, I do think it's Bieber Woodruff, um, and I do like Bieber quite a bit. I mm-hmm. do like I do like Woodruff more though. You know, I, I think Woodruff is a better player. I can't exactly, but but I can't really justify why. I mean, look, he's against the worst team, but but is it really? I mean, are the Reds really worse than the White Sox against the righty? I guess they have to be worse. They're worse, but they're not. But I hear what you're saying. Your 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 you point know? is valid. Like, um there's still guys who can actually hit the ball out of the park on the White Sox. Like, I mean, and there right. are, there aren't on the Reds, but I mean, they're the guys who don't strike out three times, you know, out of four at bats right. every game against the righties. But, like, like but, the but, none, but nonetheless, I am still getting to some Cleveland again today. Um, uh, so I, I want you to talk about that against Cueto, but for, for me, it's, it's, it's Bieber and, and, and Cleveland. Yeah. I think it's time we finally, I think, I, I think it's time to, to go back to Cleveland today. Um, if you had to pick a stack again, I'm not, in love with the stacking. I know in general it makes sense, but this is the, exactly the kind of slate where I could see going like three, two, two, one kind of a thing. Like it, it and, and by the way, that stuff has been winning a lot for people lately. Um, it won, it almost won me all the money the other night in the, uh, in the, well, it won me the single entry, but it won me, almost won me the, uh, the, the two fifty because I did a, I did a three, two, two, a three, three, one, one. Um, just because nobody's really going off in these games and, and, and and somebody sure they will tonight, but like nobody's projected to. I mean, this is one of the lowest big sl- or reasonably big slate. You know, nobody has a big run total kind of s- situation. So I uh, I like the idea of Ramirez and Naylor, especially. I want the lefties, and I also think you know what we see it over and over again. Cueto is just sneaky. Yeah, gets there. Um, he's sneaky, sneaky solid, but uh. But I think that, and then maybe you include Jimenez as well in that. Maybe make it a nice little Cleveland three man. I do have them as as the next most interesting stack to me, and maybe maybe even I think Milwaukee could go off more than maybe they will. Uh, White Sox have a good bullpen too, but I really like the uh, you know the you go Quan Ramirez, Naylor, and Jimenez, and play all four or get three of those guys in your lineup, and I think you'd feel pretty good about it. That's that's what I'm planning on doing tonight. Yeah, I put five, I put a fifth one in here just to make it look prettier. I yeah. put Rosario in also just to make yeah. it look prettier. Sure. But those four are the top for me as well. The Naylor, Jimenez, Ramirez, and Quan. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I, and for what you were saying about Bieber, uh, I do, it's very easy with everything we said with all these other pitchers that we're talking about. It's, it's really easy just to play Bieber alongside of Verlander. I'm sorry, alongside of Woodruff tonight. And, and you're fine. You're, you, there's just enough cheap bats out there to fit in. Even if you want to play an expensive stack, you've got cheap bats everywhere um, pretty much in every game. And, and uh and, and and for what it's worth historically in a pretty pretty large sample size 200 at bats you know Bieber's K rate is right near 30 percent which is it's very solid um they've hit him they've hit they've had a lot of power off of him which again happens with Bieber sometimes but usually solo usually solo home runs um and so if, if you're not going to play Bieber and you want to get weird because it's a small slate I wouldn't mind if you want to play a one off of Jose Abreu but I do have Bieber and Woodruff as the most logical top two. I just expect one of these other guys to, to, to surpass or be right there with them. Um, for oh, what else, uh, Cleveland will let Bieber go, by the way, they, they have a lot to play for. They're trying to see, this is a huge game for both teams. Every game is between these two, but this they, they, Cleveland can sort of stamp that the, they're, they're moving. They're going to win the division if they can win this game. So um, I do think they let Bieber go as many pitches as he wants to, as, as long as things are going well. I'll let you talk about Uria specifically with respect to um, uh, his fantasy upside in a game like this with whatever pitch issues might pitching count issues may exist with the Dodgers in general. But I will say this is that um, I think Zach Gowan, while I don't think he's a particularly good play in fantasy, I think he's good. I know he's been behaving well enough and good enough. That'll, it'll keep you off my normal desire to play the Dodgers. Um, You know, I always like to like to get to Dodgers, especially, you know, (laughs) <laughs> this is really funny. I say, especially when they're a late game. That's pretty one of the stupidest things I think I've ever said. Um, <laughs> but uh, especially sometimes because they're a late game. 
And I shoot, I do think that they get owned less because of that than they should. But uh, I, I think Gallon's good enough probably to keep me off of them a little bit. If I listen, I play a bunch of lineups and I get 10% Dodgers, it's not going to bother me. But but I, I don't think I'm going to like adjust my projections and adjust my ownership to play the Dodgers, which I can do sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll let you discuss uh, discuss areas. I, I happen to think that there's just, uh, you know, the, the 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 guys we talked about, like Bieber, Woodruff, Verlander, I mean, they're, they're just have, uh, a little a little bit more of a, I don't know, just a little more juice in them to hurry us, but uh, I'll let you talk about it. Yeah, um, I I don't see any reason to play Urias on this slate. Uh, I I am not the guy who always I, I am the guy who's usually using these Dodgers pitchers as pivots. And and if you want if you want a guy who's going to go out there and put up somewhere between fifteen and twenty five, I think there's almost like it almost never happens that Urias doesn't do that. This guy has been unbelievable this year. You could make a strong case for him as Cy Young, um, and and he just gets overlooked uh like completely so i i i think he's a really great pitcher i don't think there's any reason to get any extra pitchers involved in this slate for me personally and i would rather play bieber and woodruff over him i also do think there's the only thing is do they let him do they let him go out there and throw 100 because he's in the cy young conversation he has has had a longer leash than, than most of the dodgers. Uh, that's not the dodgers deal I it's, mean. The, it's not their thing i know but but it's not like they're protecting Kershaw here. I mean, this is, this is a guy who deserves his, his moment in the sun. And I think there is some sort of a feeling of, of letting him have it because he's a very well-liked guy who's been on this team, who's been in the bullpen for most of the playoff runs and all that stuff. Who's just in in real life, one of the best 20 pitchers in baseball. Uh, Maybe even, I guess you could probably say higher than that, even after this season. Um, But as far as the Dodgers go, as good as like Gallon's been great. He's been great against the Dodgers too, for what it's worth in the past. I, I am very comfortable with if the Dodgers are low on just going ahead and stacking them if I wanted to pick one stack to win it all. But I, I also think that they're going to get a little bit of ownership. And I'll just say my, my favorite plays are no are no shocker here. They're that's Freeman and Turner. It's not gonna I'm not getting crazy with it. Those are the three best uh three best options. And I will probably end up with those as like three man stacks to try to avoid fully stacking tonight, just because I don't know if you need to, but looking at this Dodger ownership, it really all stays sub 10%. I, I think that that is the best stack just, just, just based on logic alone, Arizona has got a terrible bullpen. If you do get to gallon early, they're not playing for anything, but everybody kind of wants to bring their best against the Dodgers. It doesn't really work out usually very well. Um, and I think the Dodgers might, because they've lost two out of three, go out there and put out their full best lineup tonight. So, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't even realize this. I stopped watching the game because I was kind of dead. Mad, Mad bum pulled, pulled something out of his ass yesterday. Is that what yeah. happened? Yeah, wow. I was very really happy that Good I was like that. I stayed lower on the Dodgers. He for some reason he he's another one. He just always pitches effectively enough against the Dodgers. They'll get him Good one time, him. you know, a year or something, but he'll have four good starts against them. It's weird. Maybe, um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll get the Barry Zito to come back and pick some or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's hilarious. That's a good reference. Yeah. Um, but I, I I do like the Dodgers. I, I'm not in love with my stacks tonight, but I'm the t- stacks that I'm looking at the most are the Dodgers, Cleveland, Milwaukee. And then Chicago, I think, might end up being the the next one for me, especially if Keller getting ownership. I don't see why Chicago wouldn't be one of the best options on the slate. They're super cheap. You've got guys you can play one through nine that are, you know, I don't know why they bat Morrell ninth, because I think he's the guy I always want, and he's batting ninth, which is just frustrating. But uh, Reyes, Gomes is a cheap catching option. I, I do think that that the Cubs – Milwaukee, Cleveland, and the Dodgers are my favorites with a little uh, side note that I, I thought I'd be avoiding Yankees chalk. I'll see where that oh ends up. The ownership ends up. If the Yankees don't end up chalky at all, then I'm of course going to go back there, but I think they're going to end up being the most popular team. What on kind of world are we living in? Bobby, 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 the brain firestone is playing, is playing, is playing the Cubs in, in, in the stacks in, in, in DFS and daily fantasy sports. I know it's a weird, it's a, it doesn't feel great, but, uh, but you know what? If Kelly gets ownership, I mean, I, I double and triple and I second the emotion, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, that's uh that's pretty good for me. It's just, I mean, uh, I, 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 I hope somehow Milwaukee becomes popular. I mean, like people want to play them. I, I just, I just prefer, you know, play the guy that throws in hundred. I like guys that throw in a hundred. Me too. <laughs> me too. In, and in the, Milwaukee, I Remember what, yeah, Milwaukee is is fun because they have the power upside. They're in a great hitters park and everything. Yeah. But this team doesn't walk. That's what I was saying about Scherzer the other night against them. Like when when I was making a case for Scherzer, they strike out and they don't walk enough, and that's enough of a reason for me not to want to fully stack them. But playing a a, a three man or something is is something is probably what I'm more looking at for that. But I, I like the idea of Chicago and I like the idea of the Dodgers 
and Cleveland and, Mil and, and then again, the, the mini Milwaukee. Um, but overall, I yeah. am definitely going to be spread out. My favorite plays on the slate, Reyes, Chapman, Vlad, uh, Frank, Wander Franco, Kyle Tucker, Alvarez, Judge, Devers, Ramirez, Naylor, Betts, Turner. And what I'm going to do is sort of put all those guys into a, a pool. And they're going to be in, you know, there'll be six of those guys in all my lineups. And then I'll just fill out with with stacking the rest of it. Because I, I, I think that is the way I want to play this, this particular slate. For me, my seven teams, as I mentioned, were the top Milwaukee Yankees and Houston. And under that, I do have Cleveland, Dodgers, Braves, and, and Toronto. Although I've, I've, I've indicated that Toronto is probably off my, off my list or anybody playing against Tampa. This is kind of off my list for a little while. And then, then pitching is where, you know, I, I, I think I am going to play one of those guys, either, either Woodruff or Bieber. Um, or Verlander. I just don't think it's the time to double pay down. I thought yesterday was a good a good time to do that because you had what's his name up uh, at the top. Um, but 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 today I think those those guys at the top are not those guys that you just want to just you know like Robbie Ray it up. You know what I mean? Those guys are very you know. Right. I, I I I I I trust one of those guys to get there. You know, and and right. to to fade all of them is very very difficult to do. Um, right. So I'm probably going to play in one of them. I don't know which one, but but one of them probably I'll probably end up with Hunter Green at the end of the day um yeah. but we'll 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 hopefully hopefully people get too cute and not want to play them we'll see what happens yeah i, I have woodruff as a pretty clear number one and then i've got i, I am probably going to play this wisniski in a couple lineups that's the other one yeah, yeah um, okay. and then i'm going to mix in some barrio screen freed and bieber um i i don't i i think the more i build i'm going to have a hard time yeah it'll, it'll you'll see why it's so easy to play bieber and woodruff if you want to together um Oh really? That's annoying. It's too easy because there's just so many value bats. Even if you're not okay. stacking them, you can you got all these two K guys that are just you know it's that's the yeah. way it is in the season. All right, well we'll be with you guys. I'll be with you guys. Uh, we'll be left with you live at uh, five thirty Eastern, and then we'll talk some football on that as well. And uh, yeah, sheets. Anything else before we get out of here? No. By the time they hear this, we will have already done probably the one o'clock live. Okay. Yeah. So. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Yep. Good luck, everybody.